from what Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran is the ayat وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ فَحَدِّثِ and Allah Ta'ala mentioned other ayat about how the Muslim should go about giving shukr for the favors of Allah that he bestowed upon him. The Prophet said in the authentic hadith, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Attahadduthu bi ni'matillahi shukruha. So the first ayat he said, as it relates to the favors of Allah upon you, talk about it. If Allah gave you a ni'mah, then talk about it. Especially if you know that by talking about it, it's going to encourage other people to do good. And in the hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you talk about the favors of Allah, that is giving shukr. The fact that you would share it with other people. Now, a lot can be talked about and a lot can be said. What is the minhaj of Al Islam when it comes to? the ni'mah that Allah bestowed upon you, but that's not the point here today. I just wanted to establish something that I'm going to share with you is from this bab, at-tahadduth bi-ni'matillahi shukruha, to talk about the favors of Allah, that is one of the ways that you give shukr. And there are other ways, but this is what concerns us today. Allah he gave me the opportunity, alhamdulillah, to perform hajj this past year. And that was from the ni'mah of Allah Azawajal. And while performing hajj, while performing hajj, I saw a lot of things. And a lot of things happened. And one of the things that I took upon myself as a responsibility was that when I came back to the UK, if Allah allowed me to come back to the UK, I would make it a point to tell every single Muslim here, this community, to get serious about performing Hajj. Because one year comes and it goes, another year comes and it goes, and another year comes and it goes, and on and on and on, and the person still didn't perform Hajj. And what is he waiting for? Especially in light of the fact the Nabi told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, istamti'u bihadil bayt qablan yurfa. Hurry up and perform hajj at Allah's house before the Kaaba is raised up and is taken away. One of the signs of Yomul Qiyamah is that the Kaaba is going to be destroyed. So many people, they don't perform hajj because they procrastinate. It's even in our culture. Some of the cultures, they tell us, hey, just keep procrastinating. When you hit the age of 40, 45, 50, that's when you make hajj. I came here to first say to you people, hurry up and perform hajj. There is no ibadah from the ibadat of al-Islam like al-hajj. All of the walking and all of the difficulty and all of what you go through, nothing else is like it. And then the individual, if he performs hajj the correct way, he'll come away feeling as if he put something forward for himself, for his religion. Like he really worshipped Allah because of the difficulty of Hajj. It's just like that. The Nabi described the Hajj Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as being the Hajj or the Jihad of the woman, the weak, and the person who was sick. So the first point I want to do was practice this Sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He has a Sunnah that is Mahjura. People don't practice it. And there are many Sunnahs like that. When he performed Hajj Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his companions, there were over 100,000 people who performed Hajj with him because they wanted to have the opportunity to see what he did at Hajj. So when they heard that he was about to perform Hajj, everybody came to Medina. And when he left Medina, the other Arabs in the desert gathered up with him. When he performed Hajj, there were over 100,000 companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, and a lot happened. But the point here about the sunnah that has been abandoned is that at the end of the hajj, he said to the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لِيُبَلِّغُ شَاهِدُ مِنْكُمَ الْغَائِبِ Let the one who is here performing hajj with me, Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, let those of you who perform hajj with me here today go back and tell the people who didn't perform the hajj. Let them know about what you saw. 
Let them know about the ahkam, about what I did. And that's one of the many fada'il of the companions. The day of Ashura, it freaks me out. It's disturbing that a group of people who call themselves Muslims will come on the 10th of Ashura and curse Abu Bakr and Umar and Aisha and the rest of those companions, radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. When the Nabi was performing Hajj, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the wife of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, her name is Asma bint Umais. May Allah be pleased with her. She was pregnant with the son of Abu Bakr. She delivered the baby at a place called Dhul Hulayfa, the miqat of the people of al Medina. When she delivered the baby, they have to know, Ya Rasulullah, what should the woman do? He said, tell her to make a ghusl because of what happened and to protect her clothes from the blood, Akramakum Allah. Akramakum Allah. That lady went all the way to Mecca. She did all of what the pilgrims do. She came all the way back being in postnatal bleeding. And one of us, one of us, if you go to Hajj with some of the people, all they do is cry and they complain. Here you have a lady from the companions because of what she did. We know what is the ahkam concerning the woman in that situation. While we were performing the hajj, while we were performing the hajj, we went to a place called Uhud, the mountain of Uhud. The Prophet said about it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Uhud, Jabalun nuhibbuhu wa yuhibbuna. This mountain loves us and we love it. So if you are a believer, in your religion, you have to love Mount Uhud. It's part of your religion. But you don't love the mountain because it's rocks, it's a mountain. You love it because what took place there. Anyway, the Shahid. At the Battle of Uhud, a number of companions were killed. I was telling my group about the story of Mount Uhud, and all I was doing was talking. 50 degrees out there. 50 degrees. After talking for about 15, 20 minutes, I was soaking wet with sweat. Drenched with sweat. And I didn't fight anybody. All I was doing was talking. What about Hamza and the rest of those companions who fought out there? And then the person comes on the day of Ashura and he curses the companions. We were in Mecca. And when we were in Mecca, we went to a Jabal, a mountain called the Mountain of the Ghar. It's mentioned in the Quran. It's where the Prophet Wasallam, when he was leaving Mecca, he went with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and they went high up on that mountain to protect themselves and to hide from the kuffar. We were out there, 50 degrees outside. I'm just talking. After I finished talking about what had happened, I was drenched in sweat like I took a shower. I didn't climb any mountain. No one was after my life. It was easy for me. It's just kalam. And then the person comes and he doesn't recognize the position of those companions in this religion. So what I wanted to share with you brothers in this religion is hurry up and perform hajj there is no ibadah like the ibadah of, 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 of al-hajj and when you get an opportunity to perform hajj you're going to see some of the weirdest things that you've ever seen in your life you're going to see the reality of our ummah the reality of the muslims in Huddersfield, in mirpur the reality of the Muslims in Kurdistan. You're going to see the reality of this ummah. And from the reality is that we see the weakness of the Muslims. And that weakness is internal and it is external as well. Internal and external. Concerning the external weakness that we saw with our own eyes, no one can reject it. It's the fact that when we were preparing to go on the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah, the day of a Tarwiyah, when the Hajj actually begins, the people have to go to Mina. It was a day or two before the eighth. We were in the hotel in Mecca and we saw the news flash. The Muslims were in Mecca, millions of Muslims in Mecca. And in a day or two, we're going to go to Mina. There were millions of Muslims in Al Medina. In the Prophet's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they hadn't made the trip yet to Mecca, but they were going to be making the trip. A million in Mecca, a million over there in Al Medina. And then there was the third Masjid in Al Islam, Masjid Al Aqsa. While we were watching the program, the Zionist Yahud, 
They went inside of Masjid Al-Aqsa on the 6th, 7th day of Dhul Hijjah. And they went in there with automatic weapons. And they shot people in there. And they shot the masjid up. And no one in Mecca. And no one in Medina. And no one in Huddersfield. And no one in Iraq. And no one in Kurdistan. No one anywhere could do anything about it. Because it's the external weaknesses of this ummah. No one here could do anything about it. Other than maybe make dua. But all of those Muslims coming together in one place in the two sacred messages in Al-Islam. Multitudes of people. A lot of people. And yet, we couldn't do anything. So I find it strange. I find it weird that the people give dawah in Allah. And they busy themselves with politics. It's as if they don't know the reality of our ummah. They don't know the weakness of our ummah. Here in the UK, I hear people giving dawah to establish the khilafah. And I say, hey, I'm the first one who would like to see the khilafah of al-Islam established correctly. The real khilafah. Not what's in the tasawwarat and the takhayyalat of these people. In their imagination. No, not that. The real khilafah where a tawheed is the most important issue. Where the khilafah is there to help people Worship Allah, all of the people. It establishes safety and security and a system. As for this romantic idea that people have where they just echo al khilafa and khilafa, but he himself doesn't establish a khilafa in his own house. So the point here is, the point here is, when the person is giving dawah to politics, like a few years ago, we have some of these du'at, shiyukh, they were telling the Muslim countries, Syria, Egypt, Tunis, Algeria, Libya. They were telling the Muslims in all of these places, hey, hey, make khuruj against your rulers because they're no good. And they used to say jihad is wajib, jihad is wajib. We don't know where the fatwa came from, but that's what they said. And they were making these rough and tough khutub, rough and tough. Now, three, four years later, look at the reality of the Arab world. Look at the reality of the Muslim world. Did anyone here in his right mind ever think that Syria will be reduced to what it's reduced to right now? Did anyone ever imagine that? It's something that is unimaginable to the point that Muslims now from Syria, other than Syria, are getting in boats trying to make it to Europe, falling over in the water along with their children, drowning to death. So those same duat who told the people, go out, go out. Make these problems. Now their dua is, oh Allah help the ummah, oh Allah have mercy on the ummah. Our ummah is weak. And therefore, the imam of the masjid has to know that. The administration has to know that. The parents of these children, we have to know that. People who are teaching the religion, you have to know. The reality of our ummah is we are weak. Take it easy. Take it easy. As for the internal problems, hadith wala haraj. I heard with my own ears. I saw with my own eyes at Hajj. I heard people saying, the most important thing about Hajj is worshiping Allah. That's why we do Hajj. It's the main thing. This khutbah right here, the main goal and the objective is to worship Allah. Remind you of your religion. Remind ourselves of what are we doing. That's, this khutbah is not about getting money for the masjid. The khutbah is not about just coming and having a break. The khutbah is about worshiping Allah. And hajj is like that. Wallahi hijjul bayt. To Allah belongs the hajj. So the kuffar of Quraysh, they used to make hajj. But they used to make shirk. The prophet came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he made a hajj of tawheed. And one of the first things that he did was, he changed the talbiyah. His talbiyah was labbayk allahumma labbayk. You want to know about the weakness of our ummah internally? I saw with my own eyes. I heard with my own ears. People saying, Hussein I saw people saying, I saw that. I heard that. Your hajj is for Hussein? Your hajj is for the Nabi? I saw with my own ears. I heard with my own ears and I saw with my eyes. Standing at the maqbara of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
people from my group, from your background, standing there asking the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for good health, for a good job, to help his marriage. That's our ummah. That's our ummah. Internally, internally. Now it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that there's no khair in our ummah. I'm talking about the condition, the reality. I saw in our ummah, khwani, at that hajj, how our community, we have a problem. We have a major problem with a nadam and tanzim. And you go to any masjid, any masjid, and you'll find that is the reality. You will be hard pressed to go to a masjid in which everyone puts his shoes where they belong. Every masjid is going to have a group of people just throw their shoes off at the door. Every Friday, there are going to be a group of people who compromise the parking in every masjid. That's how it is. That's how it is. Because we are people who, when it comes to a nadam and tanveen, I won't make ghulu and I won't be zalim, inshallah. I won't say that our ummah, we don't like it. We just don't pay attention to it. Because I just want to come in and I want to get out. But then, if we're looking at the people who have special needs, if something were to happen in this place and we all had to run out, some of us will get out and we won't be challenged by the shoes. But the one with special needs, he'll be challenged by the shoes. The one who is older, he'll be challenged by the shoes. He trips over and he breaks his, he breaks his hip. Why? Because someone from amongst us, a group of us, we just couldn't take the shoes to put them where they belong. Now it gets on a bigger level at Hajj. A bigger level. What's the level at Hajj? The level at Hajj of not appreciating, not following directions is there's a street and we are 300,000 people and all of the arrows are pointing this is the way you must go. So everyone's going that way. But there's always a group of people from this ummah who they have to come the other way. And when they come the other way, you get 600, 700 pilgrims losing their lives under a stampede just because people didn't want to follow the right direction. You're making tawaf at the Kaaba. For those of you who have been there, a million people are going around the Kaaba. A million people are going in one direction. And now Islam is a religion of, it's a religion of nadam. When you perform hajj, you have to be here on this day. You have to be at that place. You have to do this thing. You can't do things the way you want to do it. Salatul Jummah is at a particular time, a particular way. That's teaching us nadam. So from the ahkam of al-hajj, if you have the ability, the Prophet prayed, 100,000 people with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're going to make room for him. He went around the Kaaba seven times, and then he made two rakat behind the maqam of Ibrahim, right behind the maqam of Ibrahim. But when you have a million people, how can it come to the mind of an individual that you should pray behind the maqam of Ibrahim? So when we're walking around the Kaaba, people are falling over those people. It's just mind-boggling. It makes you say, how and what were you thinking about? He has a good knee. His knee is for Allah and it's sincere. But it's the knee in the wrong place. So as we've mentioned in this masjid many times, your knee is important, Ya Abdullah. But along with the niyyat is that the action has to be done in accordance to what is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. So to go outside and to rob someone with the niyyat of taking the money that you robbed, to bring it to build a masjid that doesn't fly in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. It doesn't help us in the deen of Allah. The niyyat and the action. So with that being the case, Ikhwani, I wanted to make this point. I was at Hajj, me. I was at Hajj myself. I saw what happened. I find it, again, the condition of our ummah. There are people at Al Hajj from our ummah, Wallahu A'lam. Allahu A'lam. On the day of Arafah, that is the day in which it's one of the most important days throughout the year. It's not the single most important day, but throughout the year, it's one of the most important days. It is that day in which Allah forgives and he emancipates more people from the hellfire than any other day. So if you're a pilgrim, you have to take care of this day. You have to have kind of like anti-sociable behavior, meaning 
I don't want to talk to my wife. Don't bug me on this day with these things that you need. Uh, you're my friend. You're my brother. We came together, but I really don't want to waste time. Maybe when it's time to eat, we can talk a little bit, but this is the day of Arafat. On the day of Arafat, we are overwhelmed. We are bothered with a group of people who come to perform Hajj, and they make it in a political statement. A political statement. Down, down, USA. Down, down, USA. All during the hours of Arafat. That's what we have to hear. If anything, if anything, busy yourself with yourself and the needs of your family. Everybody in this masjid, without an exception, without an exception, you have more than enough to preoccupy yourself with as it relates to your own self and your own family. No one here has the time or the luxury to be looking outside of his own situation. And if he did start to look outside of his own situation, then let him look outside towards that which will benefit him and the others. So I have my family. I'm responsible for them and myself. I have more than enough on my plate. But I'm going to look out and I'm going to say, maybe I can come to Huddersfield to give the khutbah in the masjid because that will benefit me to benefit them. As for sitting and wasting my time about those issues concerning the people and conditions that do nothing but waste your time, this is the condition of our ummah. Now, I didn't come here, Ikhwani, to paint a bleak and dark, dreary picture about Al-Islam, of course. Al-Islam is the deen of Allah, Azawajal, and it is the truth, and it's complete, and it's beneficial. Non-Muslims who have problems with Al-Islam their problem comes as a result of what they see from the Muslims. As for the religion, whenever they try to come and cherry pick issues in the religion, there are always plausible, intelligent, fair and just explanations that we can give everybody. Whatever they have a problem with in the religion of Islam, the halal and the haram. Kufab Quraysh, they used to have a problem with why do you worship Allah alone? They had a problem with that. Hey, we can explain that very easily. Kofar Quraysh used to say, why is it that Allah chose Muhammad and he didn't choose from the other tribes of Quraysh? Hey, we can do that very easily. Why is a man allowed four wives? Very, very, all of those issues can be answered. But what's difficult to answer is the way we behave, the way we carry on. So if we want to establish the khilafah and we want to establish Islam, it's the responsibility, individual responsibility, of each and every person here. Establish the khilafah in yourself, in your home. Establish the khilafah by worshiping Allah correctly and dealing fairly and justly with the people around you. And that doesn't mean that we're from the malaika and we won't make mistakes. Last issue that I wanted to mention, because I had a lot of topics, but there's another critical issue. Something that happened recently, and it went viral in this country. And I, I, the contradictions, they, they're disturbing. Wallahi, they're disturbing. The West and the media, the Western media, this media. When the Zionist Israelis, Israelis were killing those people, and to this very day, they're killing people in Palestine. To this very day. But the narrative that we get from the BBC is the narrative that the Zionists want to give. It's just double standards. The Muslims are being killed. And then on BBC, they have that thing that goes across the screen. An Israeli soldier, he sprained his leg. On the day that they buried alive a man, his wife, and an 18-month-old toddler. So you want to tell me about ISIS? I tell my own community about ISIS. ISIS is our problem. ISIS don't help us. ISIS, they help the enemies of Al-Islam. Young people who don't let shaitan come to you and make you think going to Syria is going to help you or something. We'll tell our community that. And we'll warn our kids, I better not catch you thinking about going to Syria. We'll tell our own community. But where is the justice? ISIS burnt people, according to them. They burnt people. That old Zionists are burning people. So what, 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 why don't we hear about that? Instead, we hear the Israeli man, he, he sprung his ankle. 